Hey everyone, this is Dave, and this is a demo to show you how to set up LaserWeb with the LaserPecker 1 and 1 Pro. LaserWeb is a very popular free application that you can use to convert JPEGs and vectors into G code, and you can customize it for any machine that you want, and we're going to show you how to customize it so that it generates G code that's compatible with the LaserPecker. So, when you first launch the software, you'll get a screen like this. This is your workspace, and we're going to come back to that. But first, we're going to go over here to Settings, and we're going to configure the machine so that it works well with and generates the proper G-code for uh, the laser pecker. So I've already done it. I've already gone through the setup, but we'll walk through the settings. First stop is going to be this machine uh, section, and this lets you set up basic parameters of the machine. Machine width and machine height, 100 millimeters, makes sense. That's the size of the workspace in the laser pecker. Uh, origin offsets, very important. So the laser pecker does not work on a coordinate system that goes from 0 to 100. It uses 0 as the center, and fi minus 50 and plus 50 on either side is the, the way it defines the workspace. So you have to give the laser web software the offset of minus 50 on either axis so that it generates coordinates that go from minus 50 to plus 50. Otherwise, if you tried, if you didn't fix this and left it at the default, which is zero, uh, you would end up without a successful burn and it would probably trip safety stops because you'd be trying to drive the laser outside of the operational area. So minus 50, minus 50 for X and Y. Uh, set your tool head, depending on the model of laser pecker you've got, this will change. 0.15 is what it is for the Laser Pecker Pro, which is what I have. Um, pop down to machine feed ranges. I usually keep these. Uh, XY is the only one that's relevant here. Uh, I usually keep it at a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 3,000. It usually doesn't come into play, but it's a good idea to set it up anyway. So once you're done with that, you can click on machine, close it back up, go down to G code. Now this is the important part. Um, Marlin. You want to select Marlin instead of the default, and it has to do with the way that you communicate the laser intensity to the laser pecker, and it tends to use the Marlin type format of doing that, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Uh, G code start. This G code is executed once at the very beginning of the job. Uh, it sets up the printer, uh, the etcher, to do uh, a couple of things. Uh, the first thing, I always put in a, a, a stop command, uh, just a, a laser off command, just to make sure that the laser's turned off. These next two define both absolute coordinates and uh, a metric units for the, for the printer to understand. So the coordinates are tra transmitted in metric units. Uh, G1F2000 is a speed, which is used in the next step. You'll see how that plays out in the, it's a, it's a feed rate. So when the laser's off, it'll, it'll move this fast um, when you have that in there. And then G4P0 is very important for the laser pecker. These are pauses. So what it says is basically pause until what I've just told you to do is done. Uh, and you want to have that scattered throughout your G code because otherwise bad things will happen. So um, G code end, uh, this is executed once at the very end of your job. It's put at the end of your file. Again, shut the laser off set the speed to 2000, and then let's move home. So those are all just clean up things, probably not necessary. G-code homing is not something you need to worry about. It's used if you have manual machine control, which we don't have here. Tool on is very important. So you have another pause up here, but then you just want to type in MO3 and leave it blank. Now, what's going to happen is uh, LaserWeb is going to append the laser intensity in the form of S something, S a number, usually like 255 or something like that, to adjust the intensity. But you got to leave MO3 there as the as the tool on command, and then it will append the S value at the end. Um, and that is actually derived from this laser intensity S right here. So you want to leave it that way. Uh, tool off, again, another pause, shut the laser off, and then you put this in here. The reason you put that in there is these are stacked commands. So the next command that's going to follow this in a G-code file will be a positioning command to get it to the start of the next segment. So if you have it so that it's, the feed rate is set to 2,000, it'll go really fast to the next segment. If you don't, it'll go at the feed rate that you're cutting at, which is significantly slower. So if you don't have this in here, it will slow things down considerably. So you put the F2000 in. 
Down here, pretty much everything's left to the default. 0 to 255 is the range. If you had a printer that didn't use that range, you could adjust it there. Or if you wanted to derate it a little bit for safety reasons, you could do it here. Uh, but all this other stuff pretty much applies when you're using manual control. So those are the two sections that you mess with, machine and G-code, and you should be ready to go. So you create a new profile. Uh, we'll create this one, you know, L1, LP1 Demo 1, and save it. Hit plus to save it. And you'll notice it comes up here as a, as a uh, selection, and you can use that uh, and apply the current profile whenever you come back if you were to change it. Or, you know, if you're playing around with settings and you want to see something that works better, that's an easy way to do it. So back up here to files and our workspace. Now we're going to get to actually doing the graphics files. So there are two sections. There's the documents section and there's the G-code section. Documents is where you load your JPEGs and your, raster file, or your uh, vector files into the workspace. So uh, you then drag documents into the G-code generator down here uh, to actually get the G-code to come out. And, and down here in the G-code section is where we're going to specify what kind of cut we're doing, the feed rates, and all that kind of stuff. So first, we've got to add a document. So I'm going to do a White Sox logo, um, loading it up. And you'll notice over here in the workspace, the size on this is like way whacked out. Uh, it just came up as the defaults. And so what we can do here is, is if you select the document, this little scaling window comes up and it allows you to adjust the parameters. So first thing I'm going to do is adjust the size. The aspect ratio is maintained with this checkbox on. So we're going to set the size to, say, 85. And then we're going to set the center. Remember, we talked about it being zero. So we're going to set the X center and the Y center to zero. And now you can see the logo is pretty much where we want it. Um, I think this logo looks a little bit low, so I'm going to adjust the Y centering up a little bit to compensate. So now that looks pretty much centered the way I like it, um, maybe a little bit more. And now we're done. So the document is ready to be loaded into the section down here, the G-code section, to actually set up a cut. So you drag it in here, and then boom, it comes up with all these cool options that you can use to spec when you're doing whatever kind of cut you're going to do. So I'm going to choose laser cut outside because I want an outline of the logo. Uh, there are all sorts of options in here. You can cut inside, you can do a laser fill path, which allows you to actually, you know, burn it pretty much the way the logo looks there is with dark sections. But I just want to do an outside cut just for in the interest of time. Uh, name, you can name it if you want. Socks logo um, is fine. Uh, filter fill and stroke are things you can read about. Um, it's if you have a rough graphic and you need to filter some things down, you can you can use these to tweak it. Laser diameter got uh, copied from the section before, so you shouldn't have to change that. Laser power is 100%. Again, if you wanted to derate this for a material, like if you've got a material that doesn't want 100% power, uh, then you could change it here. Margin is zero. It's, it's what you'd expect, a margin on the sides. Passes, obvious, you know, for the passes that you want to do. Now, cut rate, this is where you actually specify your feed rate. Generally speaking, I've found like when you do it on cardstock, things like that, uh, you keep put in a cut rate of like 400 or 500. I'm going to put in 400 just to just to do it. So uh, use A-axis. You're not going to need that right now. Uh, segment. Now, segment is how precise you want the translation from the G-code from the from the vector image or the raster image to the G-code to be. If you leave it at zero, it will it will render every single teeny tiny line that it finds, and your G-code ends up being massive so massive that you might not be able to transfer it to the laser pecker. So you need to change this to something other than zero. Try doing one millimeter to start and see if it follows the outline close enough for you. And I'll show you how to see that in just a minute. Um, but you want to do this because if you leave it at zero, you'll never get a file that'll load properly on the, on the laser pecker. So one is a good value. You know, If you've got something with a little bit more detail, you can take that down a bit. But that's pretty much what I've got in there. Uh, I'll leave it at one after I roll the mouse. So up here is now you'll notice that every, all the errors are cleared. And you've got this little red light near the generate. So we're going to generate the G code. And it'll grind on that for a little bit. And now it's actually converting the vector to commands to drive the laser. So, so that you can see them better, I'm going to click this box down here, the show documents box, to take away the document. 
and then it'll leave the path that the laser is going to take. And you can see how it's the outline of the SOX logo, which is exactly what I want. So this G-code is really good. So worked out well. And you can view the generated G-code here. So you can see this is the startup segment that we put in there. It's just got some comments in here of what's going on. Um, then it's doing the initial positioning. Now this is going to be a problem that we're going to address in the next step. The laser pecker does not understand G0. Uh, this took me forever to figure out, but if you, this command right here in this particular graphic is positioning it to the first point in the cut. And if this command gets ignored, the whole drawing's messed up. And because the laser pecker doesn't understand G0, um, it will. So the, the fix for this is we're going to modify the G code file outside of LaserWeb so that it uses G1 instead. I haven't been able to figure out a way to do it inside of LaserWeb, but there probably is, but I don't know how to do that. If you've got anything, put it in the comments section, and maybe I can figure it out. So um, anyway, so we're going to fix that later, but that's positioning the laser to the initial spot. It does a pause. It inserts this M3. I haven't been able to figure a way to get that out. It's just a blank M3, but another pause. That's fine. And then it turns on the laser. So then these are all the movement commands. There's the the speed, all this kind of stuff right through here. So, um, and then you go to the next segment and you'll see the setup is pretty much the same. Um, and then you go all the way to the bottom and that's the NG code right there. So this is the G code, looks pretty good. Um, we're going to uh, save this to a file that we will then transfer to the laser pecker software on my iPhone. Now this is the part where a lot of people get hung up. Uh, we're going to use Dropbox to convey it, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit that G-code file to take out those G-zeros. So we're going to export this to the file. We're going to call this socks.gcode, and then we're going to save it. And now we're going to go over to, um, to Notepad, and we're going to edit this file. Okay, so now we're over in, in Notepad. I've opened it up to the, to the G-code file that we just generated in LaserWeb. And you can see it's got that G0 in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up Control-H or go to Edit, uh, Edit Replace. And then we're going to type in G0 and space, very important, G0 space. Replace it with G1 space. And then we're going to click Replace All. That's all you got to do. Uh, but it's very important to do that. Otherwise, your whole G code file will get messed up and it will be bad. So uh, do File, Save. And then you close it up, and then we'll show you how to transfer it using Dropbox. Okay, now we're over at Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox has a free option where you can sign up for a uh, free account with minimal storage. I would suggest that you do that, because what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the G-code file from your computer up into the cloud in Dropbox, and then we're going to install the Dr Dropbox application on our iPhone and then pull it into LaserWeb using Dropbox on the iPhone. So first thing we got to do is we got to upload the file to Dropbox. I've got a G-code file that I use, or a folder that I use for doing this. So here's the socks.gcode that we created out of LaserWeb. You just transfer that up into the cloud, and it's now in the Dropbox G-code folder in my Dropbox account. So I'm going to go over to my iPhone now and uh, open this up in the Dropbox application on the iPhone and then transfer it to the LaserWeb application. So now we're over on the iPhone and we've launched the Dropbox application and navigated to the G-Code folder in it. And you can see our G-Code file has already made it over to the Dropbox application. So we're going to click those two dots, three dots rather, off to the side of the file to pull up this menu that shows you how you can transfer stuff. So you go to export, you click on that, then you come up with open in. So that's kind of counterintuitive, but that's how it works. You click on the open in, the thing with the little A next to it. And when you get that, it does the export and then save to files is what you want in this menu. Click on the save to files box right there. And this is your file structure on the iPhone. And on my iPhone, you navigate to that if it's not already up there, and you find the, the funny looking letters, you go into that M-A-T-A-R-I-A-L G code folder, 
and you click save in the upper right corner and save it to there. This is what puts it into the examples folder, which we'll get to shortly. So you save it there, and once you're done, you click over to your uh, LaserPecker software, and now you can see uh, the file inside of examples. So you go to the home page, you click examples, and then you tap on G code in the upper right, and there is socks.gcode. So if you click on that and hit preview, first it's going to need to connect to the machine because I had it shut down for a bit. But that's your G code file. Click connect and can click confirm, connect to the printer, to the etcher. And then you click on preview, type in your password, uh, and then away you go. So now it's transferring the G code file over to the etcher and the preview starts. Now the preview that it's showing is the actual G code that's being previewed, but I want to use the center point, so I'll click on that and that will show me the center point. So after you do that, it's pretty basic stuff. We'll do the preview and then we're gonna go uh, do some etching. So we'll see how that all works out. And there it is, just like magic. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped you out.